ओके गाइस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो बिफोर गेटिंग इन टू द डेटा डॉग ओके वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड लिटिल बिट ऑफ अबाउट दैट व्हाट इज ऑब्जर्वेबिलिटी ओके सो मॉनिटरिंग यू अंडरस्टैंड मोर एर लेस एवरीवन अंडरस्टैंड द मोमेंट वी से मॉनिटरिंग दैट मींस वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट इज मॉनिटरिंग बट देयर इज वन कीवर्ड व्हिच हैज बीन क्वाइंट इन लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स स्पेसिफिकली इन एसआरई वर्ल्ड and that is called observability so what is observability so sometime when we want to you know uh you want to set up a observability many people say that okay we have a host which is giving a sufficient information uh and then we don't need a monitoring and observability uh so why why they say like uh, host because sometime if you are an aws or let's say azure or somewhere so you are getting the host sufficient information and they say we don't need to invest time money and energy on the setting up of observability sometime we say uh, like uh, our uh, software is doing well in the market everything is great why we want to introduce something new things and then uh, many times we say like we don't have a time for it we are busy in the development testing release this that and all and we don't have a time and suddenly the system is failed now system is failed now the infrastructure was good monitoring was good but suddenly it's failing and why it's failing we don't know because uh when you look at the infrastructure cpu ram and all everything is great application is running also up and time up time is good but still failing because of some unknown reason and we don't know maybe the system is hacked and you know that when system is being hacked it's not ha- getting hacked because of uh, one day issues or something uh hacker try to get into your system uh, from last so many months slowly they get into the system find out the loopholes and so on okay so these are the things which we have so now the now that's the point you realize okay we could have you know set all this uh, setup in advance setup observability in advance and things like that so you'll realize a mistake and then we'll get into the things so earlier there was one keyword which uh, which is very popular and we all know that monitoring so monitoring basically is collecting and analyzing the information which is received from the different endpoints something like cpu ram network hard disk uptime and so on so why monitoring we all understand that so i will not drag this topic we know that why we want to set up a monitoring we want to analyze the long term trends we want to compare over time and experiment groups we want alerts we want to build the dashboard and debugging so all this thing we want to do that so these are the some of the primary uses of monitoring and observability data 93% to get in alerts 78% to system diagnosed 59% track sls 58% and blah 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 okay so when you want to plan for the monitoring what are the things you have to do so first thing you will say hey we'll let's decide what to monitor okay which are the resources which you have in your data center or production servers you want to monitor it can be application it can be servers network this that and all and then you will decide how to monitor okay how to monitor and then who will collect the data and want to monitor these are the primary things you decide so these are the what to monitor in terms of uh, here you have cpu memory disk load process monitoring api level monitoring message flow monitoring and also on okay so you monitor for availability security monitoring data validation integration monitoring again and performances so for all these reasons we do the monitor here we have some of the flow of monitoring these are the things which we do 
during the monitoring and so on. So why this monitoring is hard? Because of there are lots of data sources. If you look at this here, uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays uh, we all run application in a distributed environment. Correct. Uh, it's not running in one machine. It's running in the hundred and thousands of machines. We are not running the data in a physical server. We are running in the virtual servers or containers or so on. Architecture has been changed and uh, we started using multiple third party libraries and things like that. So lots of changes has happened. Now you see that this is the one this is one of the one image here we have the request is coming to the application website through the different devices different browser different isps different load balancers different dns servers different web servers different app servers different database server different third party libraries and uh, some of some of your traffic some of the end user is getting the request in 300 milliseconds for the same infrastructure and some of the users are getting the response time in 1.5 seconds so what is your job in this uh, situation what is the job you are going to perform why we have why you have attended this session so your job is to do nothing but to find out the culprit like why there are some users whose response time and experience is 1.5 seconds compared to others 300 milliseconds where we are failing and so on so this is a something which you we need to start finding it out so there are types of monitoring also white box monitoring black box monitoring so white box monitoring basically is the monitoring of application running on a server so monitoring based on the metrics exposed by the internal of the system so it can be logs interfaces like a jvm profiling interfaces or an http handlers that omit internal statistics traces and all you'll get it from the white box monitoring most of the people focus on the black box monitoring black box monitoring means refer to the monitoring of the servers with a focus on areas such as cpu disk memory load and all external which is a, which can be available from the external also so this is the ty primarily type of monitoring i'll not get into this uh, too much because that's not my areas right now one more thing i would like to tell you here when you are getting into the world of data dog or monitoring world of observability or something like that uh, you will be often prompted for golden signals so if uh, someone is saying hey what is a golden signals so basically golden signals is a, is a mechanism is a alerting mechanism monitoring mechanism alerting mechanism where when you when you want to set up a monitoring for your infrastructure then you set up all these alerts so you should set up the alerts for latency you should set up alerts for errors you should set up alerts for traces and traffic and you should set up alert for saturations so that should be a goal actually so when you when someone asks, uh, when you are asking or you are doing yourself uh, and auditing the monitoring system, then you should ask, hey, are we having dashboard for latency and dashboard for alerts? I mean, uh, are we having alerts for uh, latency or uh, traffic and all that? So this is the basically uh, one standard process which we use in the industry so to set up the monitoring and alerting we call it a four golden signals latency traffic error and saturations 
Will you remember this? Okay. So now, some of the slides I'm skipping it because we don't want to, you know, go with the so much of theory sessions and all, and so on. Okay. Uh, uh, Rajesh, uh, just one question. So uh, these slides would be uh, shared with us or not? Uh, everything will be shared with you guys. Everything okay. is meant for Thank you only, uh, you guys only, and I'll share the links. From where you can download the slides. Okay. Thank you, thank you. I mean, you can see the off online also. Okay, so here now I just give you a little bit of idea about the monitoring, which you know that I know. But uh, nowadays, as I said, we are talking about observability a lot. Okay, everyone is talking about observability. So now the question is, what is observability? So, if you look at this here, this is the pyramid for any software development. So here, you do the product development, capacity planning, test plus release procedures, post mortem, you set it up for it, and incident response and the monitoring. So monitoring is the most basic component in their reliability pyramid. This is the product reliability pyramid. And enable incident response and post mortem. But you know what? Monitoring is dead. Yes, monitoring is dead. So nowadays we don't say we want to set up a monitoring. Monitoring is dead. And now we are talking about hey, we should go ahead and set up observability. So the questions which is pop up getting popped up popped in mind. And that is like, what is observability? So understand this. Monitoring tells you whether the system is working or not. Okay, CPU is higher than 50% or lesser than that. Your website is up or down. Process is up and down. Disk space is filled or not filled. It's like that. So monitoring tells you whether the system is working or not. But observability let you ask why it is not working. Why it's not working. So CPU is a more. Why CPU is more? What processes? What particular call? What is a log? What are the traces? Where it incurred? How can you fix it? Everything observability tell you everything okay so rajesh if you will talk about data dog so data dog is monitoring or observability yeah so data dog not only data dog i would say mm -hmm. every tools you see in this space in today's world let's say talk about data dog new lake splunk elastic grafana everyone Primarily, I'm talking about the paid software. Nagios as well? No, no not Nagios. Okay. So all these tools are all these tools are helping you to set up observability. So now we have we have to discuss a little bit more more about the observability. Then you'll understand that okay. how uh, you can use it. Nagios also as part of observability, but Nagios don't offer observability. Okay, but you can use as a one component, and that I'll discuss in some time. Okay, so here monitoring tells you whether system is working or not. Observability let you ask why is not working. Okay, so observability means assembling all fragment from logs. Monitoring. tools and organize them in a such a way such a way which gives actionable knowledge of the whole environment and thus in creating insight of it okay so that is observability just give me two seconds Yeah. 
so let's understand observability a little bit more in detail so once upon a time there was a monitoring but observability is a super set of monitoring yes earlier we were setting up monitoring nagios is a tool for setting up monitoring in fact data, if you look at the data doc 5 6 is year before they were offering as a monitoring but observability is a super set of monitoring it provides not only high level overviews of the system's health but also system health means if you ram network hard disk application up and running no, or not like this but also highly highly granular insight into the implicit failure modes see last discussion what we are doing system is failing we don't know now when you set up observability you will get to know why the system is failing at the at the code level also in addition an observable system furnishes ample context about its inner working how internally internally it's working unlocking the ability to uncover deeper systematic issues so monitoring is on the other hand is best suited to report the overall health of the system and derive the alerts so now if you see that let's start visualizing the observability versus monitoring and you see that here you have a monitoring alerting plus overview which you were doing earlier now in the observability you have to have a capability of debugging also profiling also dependencies analysis also and in fact you can anticipate the future also so are you started getting that little bit of idea between monitoring versus observability yes 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 yeah so here when you want to set up observability then you know what what you need to do so monitoring anyways you know that i know most of us know but you need to combine the testing efforts also that means in order to set up observability whatever the things you do in in order to validate the software in the testing phases some of the things you have to bring it to the observability that means bring the all the practices which you follow to validate the software testing best effort verification of correctness it can be security it can be checking some some main business transactions it could be checking the same main business feature everything you have to put it up together with the monitoring practices and to find out what could be the best or simulate the best way to 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 detect the failure modes that is called observability okay so monitoring system should address two questions monitoring system that's like nagios is said what is broken and why is broken but observability cover the larger scope monitoring is mainly used in terms of metric monitoring so in summary observability is a property of the system and monitoring is an activity we perform on a system look at this this is the hierarchy and when you set up observability you will get something like this so what is the collections so you will collect the when you set up observability you know you will collect the logs you will collect the traces you will collect the metrics okay you will collect the signals and stats so traces and logging basically is a you collect which is happened in the past that means someone has done something on applications then only log has been generated right so that is a past data tracing also is a past data 
matrix is like cpu matrix current data what is a current cpu what is a current ram what is a current hard disk like that and based on that you see that you have logging tracing <coughs> matrices based on that you can get a signals and stats for the for the predicting the future also because your past and present will only decide future so based on that so here the data which you received from the past you can diagnose the data which you have received in the present you can dashboard you can display on the monitor and all this stuff and the data which is you know you you have signals and stats you can detect to to predict the future so are you able to understand these slides all of you yeah rajesh yeah rajesh what is the meaning here slower and faster in this image how we relate slower and faster means uh the past data which you diagnosed of course it might consume little bit of time but okay. based on the certain pattern signals stats predicting is very simple and fast so that way you can take it up okay so so more or less now you started getting a idea about observability so here observability this is the some of the differences uh gain understanding actively whereas monitoring focus on passive data observability also ask a question based on the hypothesis that is okay what will happen when you have this kind of environment hypothesis loopholes find out the loopholes in the system so people should not get into them but monitoring basically based out on the dashboard third point which is very important and i would like you to tell me that uh, here observable this is in fact very important input actually so observability built to tame dynamic environment with the change complexity changing complexity whereas monitoring it was designed for the static environment and with a little variation can you tell me this uh, this keyword how you should take it up in this all of you uh, maybe uh, monitoring we define parameters like cpu is more than 90% or more than 90% we will throw the alert but in observability we need to look for the traces debugging past logs and all these things so it is comparatively more dynamic monitoring settings parameters are fixed yeah but here i'm talking the dynamic environment and static environment anyone would like to add on top of it <clears throat> so uh, basically in uh, today's world like we are in a cloud and we have like uh, in aws we are having uh, auto scaling so uh, on the basis of the load uh, you know we increase or decrease our uh, servers so i think uh, this is the dynamic environment and we can put the observability over there you know, using the data dog and uh, in the uh, in the past like uh, uh, in uh, on prem uh, data centers like uh, we have fixed or static kind of environment so we don't see uh, you know uh, frequent changes on the infrastructure like we have two servers so we don't see the frequent uh, change on the servers like uh, uh today we are having two and after half an hour we are having four so it uh, it basically uh, don't happen in a, in on premises or data centers so in a cloud so uh, environment is frequently changing you know within a second it's being uh, up scale or down scale so hmm. i think yeah, that was one very close answer so yeah up scaling see here in the cloud environment if you see that suddenly you are running the thousand server because of load let's say big billion sales is going on right so they have increased the 5x they might have increased 5x the turnover server after the big billion sales again it will reduce to the 1x like that so that's a, one of the example of dynamic environment but one more example i would like to state is kubernet so if you look at the kubernet uh kubernet 
environment is not fixed that means for the place where you run the application container is not fixed it may you know uh, entire replacement happen at least in this when you use the cloud like the vms and all and the cloud aws still you know environments are fixed okay environment environments are fixed till some extent but in the container world kubernetes world there is no fixed environment actually okay there is no fixed environment uh, immediately you get the thousands pod millions of pod and next time you scale up scale down immediately it will be complete replacement actually so i said application runtime itself get replaced yeah so, so uh, uh, you mean like uh, in a kubernetes like uh, or the cluster or kubernetes will uh, decide like if the particular node is having the capacity to schedule uh, any new pod so then only it will allow the pod to be created on that particular node otherwise it, it will uh, let that particular node or pod to be created on any another node of that particular cluster hmm. and these pods are new pod all the time yes yes all the time new pod that yes. my ip address change see in similar pod you get it but not the same pod so it's a dynamic environment you can say yeah. and want, and when you run an application mostly in the vms and all it's a static environment so yes preferred by developers observability preferred by developers of the system with variable variability uh, of unknown permutations and here we have a known permutation so these are the major difference which we have in the observability and monitoring so observability uh, if you see that focuses on the metrics tracing and logs monitoring focus on availability performance and capacity planning so now the question is okay fine but how do we collect the data how do we collect the data to set up observability that's a question so guys uh, there is one keyword which is been coined which is called telemetry so what is the meaning of telemetry means tele means remote and metri metri means metro on means measure so because we are running a application in distributed environment very distributed environment not running uh, all application in few servers but thousands of server containers and so on so we have to measure the metrics from the remote so what are the metrics you want to gather so we call it melt always remember that if someone will ask you hey you have to set up observability and for that what are the metrics what are the uh, data types you want to gather what are the data you want to gather so simply you say melt i want to gather melt to set up observability if you say hey i want to gather only matrices that means still you are in a monitoring world but the moment you say i want the melt at one place that means you are talking about all the matrices and when i say matrices means matrices from linux server matrices from unix uh, unix uh, uh, windows server matrices from apache matrices of uh, Mm, Tomcat matrices of Java, matrices of MySQL, matrices of Docker, matrices of any other application which you are running, that's a matrix. But if you want to set up observability, you have to set up a monitoring also. So you have to gather the all the events, Windows event, Linux event, Apache event, database event, login event, application events. Application also you have many events, right? login log out many other events you want to gather the logs also if you want to set up observability so when i say logs means it can be application logs it can be app server logs it can be web server logs it can be system logs it can be linux and windows logs it can be network logs so you have to gather the logs also can be request uh, the website traffic logs also and you have to gather the traces also response time in simple way if you want to understand trace means response time i want to analyze the response time and so on so if you want to set up observability you have to collect the melt collect the melt so these are the three pillars of observability metrics and events coming together here and traces and logs
will you remember all of you yeah yeah okay yes. so now these are the three data earlier in the monitoring world we were only focusing on the matrices so yeah traces what is traces simple way i'll put it up millions of people go and browse the website and then we will capture the response time for each user response time response code and analyze it at a simple way i'll, I'll again discuss in detail in upcoming session but analyze it which response time is good which response time is bad response code and all matrices like cpu ram i just talked about many things and logs so when you want to set up observability <clears throat> you have to set up a logging plus monitoring plus tracing plus dashboard visualization means dashboard are you understanding all of you yes okay so one more context one more slides i'll not run too many slides again um, just the last almost in terms of monitoring and observability so monitoring if you if you are setting up availability availability so monitoring will get you is my system available or not observability will tell you how long is my system up performance monitoring will tell you is my system healthy but observability will tell you what is my system doing actually in terms of fault management when and where did it occur observability will give you answer why did it occur and recovery also is my system back up or what can i do to prevent the issues from recurring so these are the things which you have to do with observability so now what is matrix in detail i'm discussing here i'll just skip it resource matrix event matrix logs traces distributed traces and so on so these are the in order to set up a the uh, observability all information we have to collect it okay all information that will will talk about so I'll, I'll put it in simple way you have to do the infra monitoring when i say infra means windows linux apache mysql database web server app server all these things plus you need to do collect the logs plus you need to collect the traces apm we call it plus you need to do synthetic plus you do need to do network monitoring plus you do, do need to do ram and and combine it put it up all together and then analyze the data <clears throat> show in the dashboard and so on so this is the something which i discuss about the observability i hope <clears throat> you have some visibility about the observability now correct all of you yes yes uh, as in one project we are using datadog as we are not much familiar recently we are introduced with that proper data yeah so why is observability hard and the answer you know that very well we are changing the platform for running our application so earlier we were running in a physical servers then migrated to virtual servers and cloud and then nowadays we are running in the container with the kubernetes and all stuff like that so yeah we are changing dynamics of application so over the period of time time it's going getting getting complex we are changing the architecture also everything earlier we had everything in one monolithic architecture that means ms office the one which you are using in the laptop is a monolithic thousands of features you have but in one package just install in one go uninstall in one go if there is one problem in the software you have to build everything test everything and release everything but with the internet we got a service oriented architecture <clears throat> so we had a web server separate app server separate database server separate but now if you look at this is a microservices concept that means let's say one software 100 function and each function you have to host separately actually microservices function 
each function will have their own database and like that so complexity is increasing and see that this is a real one of the real picture of microservices call who's calling what and see that so how do you set up a monitoring how do you set up observability you need to get the data from the matrix logs and traces how do you get it <clears throat> so this is one of the challenge which we have it and for that we needed tools actually <clears throat> sorry so we needed tools for it okay so we need a tools which will tell me whether my application is available performance wise reliability wise network available performance wise reliability by server available performance or not is it up is it slow is it broken so who can help you here so you can see these are the products they can help you so datadog new relics flank elastic app dynamics dynatrace and grafana these all are products which can help you and in this today's sessions i'm teaching you datadog so what you are going to do with the datadog then so <coughs> explanation observability yes so we are going to set up not monitoring we are going to set up observability and in order to set up observability first we have to do matrix monitoring matrix collections then we have to do trace collections then we have to do the log collections we have to do the synthetic also we have to do the ram also we have to do the network monitoring also you have to do the security monitoring also and all this data we will collect and stored at datadog and then we'll explore the data analyze the data and see which data for which we want to diagnose post mortem incident alerts dashboard and also on understood all of you so simple way at one place you should have everything logs also traces also in flows i hope you have you have understood right great 